So we've talked about the relationship between the leader and the team directly, but what about the role of that team leader vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the organization? I think a big part of the leader's role is also the positive relationship management between the team and the rest of the organization. So how is the team portrayed to the organization? Is the leader going to bat for their team and making sure that they're in the best position to get where they need to go? And this is sometimes something only the leader can do. And if the leader leaves the team to languish, whatever their potential was, they might not even meet that. Yes, and I'd like to add something to what you're saying, Shivani. I think what happens in teams, when the leader has done that for a while and has role modeled that effectively and the team really gets a sense of that role, there's a, a gratitude and an appreciation for the leader. And something interesting has happened in my experience is that team members start to adopt the same behavior. They start to protect the team. They start to talk well about the team. They go out and get resources. They interface in a certain way. And the team itself becomes self-sufficient. And the leader can let go of some of that responsibility little by little and actually have the team step into its full power and potential. So Alexander, that's a great articulation mm. of how the role of the leader actually shifts mm. over a life cycle of a team, ideally as that team develops. And this is something that people often don't understand. So a leader might come from a very high functioning team in another organization, come into a new team and expect their team to be able to just hit the ground running. Mm. You know, I don't want to micromanage. I have other leadership responsibilities I want to take care of. I don't want to tell you what to do. Just do it and then get really frustrated. Well, if that's a really early stage team, the team is not going to be able to do that on their own. They are not able to function interdependently as a unit without more direction at the beginning. But once that leader really takes the time and care to do that leadership uh, internally, set direction, get clear on the purpose and goals, facilitate for a while, and also do that mediation with the other functions outside the team, the team can slowly gain the capability to take on more of that leadership function. So that eventually, when a team is more highly evolved, the leader can and needs to step back, mm -hmm. and they can be more like an expert member of the team. And there's less of that differentiation, which is really exciting to see.